Welcome to Family Gaming TV. We're back with Olivier Dumont, director of E1 Family, and responsible in part for the PJ Masks cartoons that we talked about, I guess, maybe a month ago. And so, Olivier, it seems to have gone from strength to strength. Yes, the, uh, we're, uh, we're thrilled with the results uh, of the launch on Disney Channel and Disney Junior in the, in the US. Yeah, I noticed that the channel had retweeted some um, Halloween costumes. Yeah, I mean, it went even beyond this. I mean, you know, definitely the three heroes, so the three little superheroes. So we had uh, kids dressed up as uh, all three of them, almost in equal measures. So uh, Gecko, the green character, Catboy, the blue character, and uh, Owlet, the red character, which was fantastic. But then there were also entire families that were dressed up as uh, the characters, and very oftentimes the, the parents had the baddie, uh, baddie costumes on, which I thought was really nice. funny. So, yeah, that's great to hear what's happening on social media, but currently there's no uh, official costumes or toys. Uh, is that in the works for PJ Masks? I'm sure it'd be popular. Yes, uh, it's definitely in the, in the works. As you can imagine, we have all sorts of licensees and toy companies which are uh, ringing on our, our, our t r ringing to the door and so uh, we will be starting a licensing and merchandising program probably in the US and France um, in 2016 for sure and that's not announced yet is there anything happening on the game side last time we spoke you said that there were some games in the works so our digital offering will be available at the very early start of the year so there will be of course a website but also uh, an app um, so on the website there'll be uh, at least two games and we'll also have a free downloadable app available uh, for, for kids and their parents in uh, early 2016 so there's, we've talked about the success of PJ Masks and we sort of know the general setup. We've got these children heroes with their superpowers. What do you think it is about the show that's capturing young people's imagination so strongly? I think it's, you know, it's highly aspirational in the sense that, you know, it's very empowering. You know, as, as we all know, preschoolers have a limited, you know, set of things that they can do. And therefore, seeing these kids who are completely independent and when they sort of uh, wear their superhero costumes, are able to go and in, and in, uh, into into the night and drive vehicles and do all these things that they can't do in real life. I think is highly highly aspirational. I think that's really part of the you know the reason why we're in, um, uh, incurring success with the property. I think the second thing also is the fact that the characters are very you know are extremely likable. We definitely. Um, wrote the script so that you wanted to spend a lot of time with these characters that they you know the show is very heartwarming it has a you know it's very positive yeah nice and we've just got up here a little sneak peek of uh what i think is a christmas episode where is it luna girl is stealing some presents could you maybe talk us through a little bit of how this unfolds uh, yes, so L Luna Girl sort of is stealing all sorts of toys around the around the uh, uh, around the town, and uh, until the PJ Masks going go in and stop her. And uh, the uh, the episode at the end sort of sees, and it's it, it's a bit of a first for the for the PJ Mask, where uh, you know they resolve the matter, but actually Luna Girl they manage to convince Luna Girl to do the right thing and help. Uh, put the you know the toys and the and the presents back into everyone's homes. So it's a really really and sort of illustrates very well what I was saying in terms of very heartwarming episode where you know sort of they bond with uh, with Luna Girl to set things right for Christmas and you realise that actually Luna Girl had no one to spend Christmas with and so she's you know very happy to spend Christmas with the PJ Masks. So just looking down the sort of upcoming episodes, some of these sort of catch the eye. We've got Catboy versus Robocat. Is Robocat a reappearing villain? No, 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 no. It will be only for that specific, yep. uh, only for that specific episode. And so, where you... there's a robot, you know, which is, you know, which is manufactured, I think, by Romeo in that episode, which is we always have our mad scientist Romeo. Uh, come up with all sorts of, uh, of foils and so in that particular episode it's sort of a little you know sort of robot um, that looks like Catboy. They may be laughing at an episode here Gecko 
Hiko's mobile phone is missing because my daughter is always losing her phone. <laughs> so I think that's quite a strong topic. Is that is that what happens in that episode? Yes, and so they need to to to, to resolve the matter. Again, looking down the list, there's, there's a lot of episodes coming. Are you do you have lots of them in hand, or did you make them yeah. as you go? Yeah, there's 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 still being uh, there's still being produced all of them are, are of course written already uh, and they're being released gradually um, and we'll have new episodes you know sort of uh, um, being released way into 2016 yeah so another show being brand managed by e1 family is of course pepper pig now you know financially and strategically is there an overlap or danger that one might take audience from the other Sure. Um, the way you know the, the way we've developed uh, PJ Mask is actually is really to be com- completely complementary to, to to Peppa Pig. So it's um, a slightly older demo, and also on the licensing side, it's more action adventure. So some might say slightly more boys. Also, you know, girls seem to gravitate you know so much also towards PJ Mask. But I think that again, sort of the, the, the audience is slightly older than that of Papa and, it's, and it was a very conscious decision when we were developing the, the brand to make sure that it was complementary to Papa. Um, when it comes to the, you know, to the financial performance, obviously, you know, much, much too soon to, to tell, but it's true that, again, sort of given the complementary nature of the, of the brand and the fact that it started so strongly in the US, we definitely anticipate a very strong licensing and merchandising program. And so I can, I can certainly imagine uh, a place in the not too distant future where uh, Papa reigns on the uh, sort of girl preschool aisle and sort of PJ Masks um, reigns on the, you know, boy preschool or gen- you know gender neutral uh, aisle in uh, at uh, at retail for sure. Mm, it's been interesting with a from a video game perspective. Obviously, with Peppa being skewing younger, um, that did take it more towards tablet gaming and more sort of handheld, but it's a DS game. But when I think of PJ Masks, I'm kind of thinking more of the console gaming space. Is that is that a strategy that you'd agree with? Um, it's still a bit, it's still a bit early because you know, like in terms of age group, it's it it still very much sits in preschool, which is you know still very much um, sort of tablets and and mobile phones and the the DS um, console. We will see what is the, you know, it will be interesting to see as we'll monitor this very closely and it's a good point that maybe some um, uh, console uh, game companies will also be interested to develop uh, um, games based on on the PJ Masks. But maybe it will be slightly more sort of family friendly platforms such as, you know, the Nintendo platforms, but you know, watch this space we'll, we'll see the level of interest that uh, that it attracts them out amongst those game companies well, that's great to hear more about pj masks and i'm looking forward to seeing these christmas episodes in full and then watching through the rest and also seeing them come out um globally as you've described so thanks for your time well thank you very much for having me again